I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 uh, everyone, uh, you're watching your Wrestle Rock podcast. I am uh, your host, Jonathan, and I am with my co partner, Benoit, S aka Nostradamus Ben. Are you doing, my friend, today? Fine, and you? Yes, not bad, not bad. And you know what? No. Don't you forget something? Tomorrow yeah. we will turn 39. 39, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and today we have a special guest. Uh, this is a former WWE talent. He is also a WCW talent, ACW talent, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah talent, uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling talent. He is also a former... Um, former Big Boston partner. Yes, uh, and also a former tag team champion for WWE with... Uh, right to censor. Right to censor. So let me introduce yourself, Mr. Bull Buchanan. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you guys? Yes, oh, not fine. bad. Thank uh, you. This is super awesome that you uh, can take a little time uh, all together sure. because sure. Uh, we know that uh, you have uh, you have been involved in the professional wrestling for a couple of decades, and yeah. uh, this is super awesome that we can discuss uh, about all your career and um, go uh, we're going forward with yeah, of course, of course, uh, Mr. Buchanan. Uh, in the early 90s, uh, we read uh, we read somewhere that you wrestled as Lord Among Us, a gimmick inspired from the, the 1981 movie Mad Max. Uh, was it a big challenge for you to succeed, uh, Sid Udy, aka uh, Psycho Sid? Oh sure. Um, I, I actually uh, had just started. Uh, had been in the business about six months, okay. and uh, I'd met uh, Bob Armstrong. I'd met Scott Armstrong, Steve Armstrong. Okay. They they wrestled here uh, okay. in the southeast with with me, and uh, I met them. And it was actually Bob Armstrong's ideal. Uh, he asked me if I could do it, and I said sure. I was a big fan of, of the gimmick uh, back in the day, um, and. Uh, yeah, it was uh it was uh it was a lot of fun. Uh I, I got booked a lot of places. Uh Bob booked me a lot. Uh, and and I did it uh on the indies, you know, around in the uh in the south at that time. Okay. And um I imagine you you uh after this period, if my memory is good, uh you have been um Involved in uh, NCW uh, National Championship Wrestling, uh, two Smoky Mountain, uh, um, and Smoky Mountain was um, Jim Cornet, Jim uh, Cornet promotion, uh, yes. And yeah. what was your tra uh, what was your transaction be be between uh, the NCW and the Smoky Mountain? So uh, the NC, uh, it was actually a. a, a small federation in north georgia uh i think steve martin actually okay. uh originally founded it and booked it and it progressed and and it kept going after i left and it actually in, in a roundabout kind of way turned into uh wild side wrestling okay. which turned into uh uh anarchy wrestling which a lot of the fans around here are okay. familiar with uh a lot of talent went through a lot of ta aj styles you know okay. uh, Uh, CM Punk, all those guys mm -hmm. wrestled there in Cornelia uh, for, uh, you know, under whatever variation it was. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I was wrestling there and uh, doing the indies, and uh, I got on a small TV in Atlanta, uh, Channel 36 out of Atlanta, North Georgia Wrestling, and uh, they had an affiliation with Smoky Mountain. And okay. uh, uh, Jim Cornette uh, saw one of my one of my matches and uh, was impressed and uh, – and uh, eventually brought me in. 
cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, about uh, Jim Cornette, uh, what was your relation with uh, that Mr. guy? Cornette? Oh, he, he was very much a, a mentor to me. Okay. I was, okay. you know, very young in the business, uh, you know, maybe a year at the most. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd watched Jim Cornette, uh, you know, for a long time and enjoyed okay. his, his uh, work. Um, and the group we were with was, uh, uh, it was me, Tommy Rich, uh, Terry Gordy, and Buddy Landell. Uh, you know, so I was, I was surrounded by veterans and, uh, you know, and, and, and Jimmy was a teacher, you know, and he like, he liked to, I think he liked to teach. I think he liked to, a lot of the, a lot of the talent that wound up in WWE at that time came through Smoky Mountain, you know, the headbangers, uh, Kane, okay. Al Snow, okay. you know, so yeah, That's it was, uh, cool. it was a, uh, very much a, uh, breeding ground for talent. Okay. And what, uh, and, uh, with all, uh, this contact, uh, this contacts, I imagine that you um, you had have a big uh, opportunity um, to to going uh, on ECW promotion. So uh, can you just clarify because we are not sure uh, what is your, um, your 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 story? Uh, uh, have you? Um, After the the Smoky Mountain, have you uh, translate uh, tr the transition is USWA or ECW? We're we're not sure that we're working on that, but we we don't have the the answer. So just to yeah, clarify. It, it was that, it, so it was actually uh, Smoky Mountain shut down. Okay, and, and uh, Jim Jimmy told me just you know to keep working, he would get me a, a tryout or you know something uh, in okay. New York in WWE. So during that time, I was working a lot in the Carolinas and Tennessee. I had a friend in Georgia named Billy Black. Billy Black had been in a tag team with a guy named Joel Deaton, uh, who wrestled in WCW as Thunderfoot. But they had they were a tag team over in all Japan, and that was the time that the tra the tape traders at that time in the early '90s tape traders people began trading tapes, and so. The ECW fans were some of the first fans, you know, to really see a lot of the Japan stuff, Puerto Rico, yeah. you know, different places. So uh, he wanted to bring in Joel and, and Billy. Well, Joel wasn't available. I think maybe he's in Puerto Rico or something. But uh, Billy knew me, and uh, he said I, he told Paul that he had somebody. And uh, okay. so we went up together as the hard riders. Uh, we had a, a handicap match against, I think it was Axel Rotten, on a house okay. show and we did, uh, we did TV and we uh, worked the eliminators. Okay. Um, so yeah, but it, it was a kind of a one-off kind of thing because, uh, uh, Paulie liked us. He was going to bring us back. Um, but I got a call in the meantime from Jim Cornette who had gotten okay. me a job with, with WWE. Okay. So okay. I, I, I signed with WWE and they sent me to Memphis. Okay. So, Uh, if I understand the pipeline uh, uh, for being uh, to the WWE is with Jim Cornett, right? Yes. You receive a call. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. It was a real contact. I, I, yeah. 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 Uh, Jimmy actually, uh, you know, talked to Vince at TV, told him that, I, you know, it went over to ECW and Vince told him to go ahead and sign me. And so they did. And then they sent me down to Memphis. Awesome, awesome, and we uh, we're talking uh, earlier about the USWA. So um, I believe that you have. Yeah, of course. Uh, can you, you tell us uh, about the formation of the stable, the Truth Commission, uh, at the the USWA? Sure, sure. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I I signed with uh, I signed with uh, WWE, and they sent me to uh, Memphis to work with uh, okay. uh, Jerry Lawler. Uh, yeah. they had signed, uh, Dwayne Johnson and a guy named Bart Sawyer at the same time. So the, all three of us went down there and, 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 but at that time, USWA, it, it was, uh, I guess the, the developmental territory, but they didn't really have a school or anything. So it wasn't a full service kind of deal. Like OVW was later on. Basically you went to Memphis and, and you just went to work. So I actually went down there and I worked as the punisher, which I had been, 
Uh, that was my name in uh, Smoky Mountain with Jim Cornette. I worked for about six months like that. Then I, uh, I, I was off for a, a month or two, and I got the call from uh, Stanford, from, from WWE. Okay. They wanted me okay. to come up for a costume fitting, and uh, when I went That's up, nice. they uh, – they, you know, showed me the outfit and kind of gave me the idea of what we were, you know, the, the, the South African Truth Commission. So a few more weeks went by and uh, they brought us up to Stanford once again because, you know, like I said, at the time, they really didn't have a, a training place other than they had a, a ring set up in uh, one of their uh, production studios in Stanford. And so, you know, that's where you, you went to, to work or, or, you know, learn whatever. So they brought us up. They brought me, uh, Kurgan, uh, Robert Myatt, yeah. uh, and then, uh, Mike. Friend of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Friend, yeah. Yeah. Yes. French Canadian. Uh, <laughs> yes. From New Brunswick. Yes. From New Brunswick. Yep. Uh, and at the time they brought, uh, Mike Halleck who had been Mantar in, uh, WWE earlier. Okay. He was the original member of the, of the truth commission and they brought Robin Smith who was, uh, uh, an actor from South Africa. The story was okay. that Bret Hart was doing a, a Sinbad uh, episode in South Africa, okay. and he met Robin on the set. Robin was an actor and a, and a, a voiceover guy. He was fairly popular in uh, South Africa, so they got to talking and they came up with the idea of this Truth Commission thing. The Truth Commission, the Truth Commission was actually a, a government formed uh, task force in okay. South Africa that was supposed to investigate the atrocities of apartheid. The The deal was that, you know, they were just as crooked as, you know, it was a government, it was, you know, the government policing itself, basically. Mm -hmm. So they weren't going to investigate it. They were crooked. And that was the whole idea behind us, you know, that, you know, us being the bad guys. But uh, we met up there, and uh, Robin had actually been a member of the South African Army, so he, he taught us how to march and salute and do all that. And then they sent us down to uh, Memphis to basically work all the kinks out before we came up. Okay, that's super cool. And um, uh, we're talking um, about your uh, debut Um You started your career in WWF wrestling in um, 1997. Can you share with us your first experience? Because uh, you said earlier that you received a a call from Stanford uh, for your suit. And what was the next step when you uh, received a call from uh, from Stanford? <laughs> Oh, well, we, we've been working down in, uh, you know, we, we stayed down in Memphis for a little while and we worked and, uh, okay. they, they called us and said, uh, you know, you're, you're coming up. Um, and we were, we did, I think we did a dark match. I don't remember where it was at, but we did a dark match and then, okay. uh, they brought us up and we did shotgun Saturday night and then we, yes, we started doing, you know, yeah. 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 Um, but it, it was, uh, you know, it was great it was a dream come true i mean you know it was everything i'd always wanted to do uh you know traveling and and we'd be all become friends at the time so uh it was pretty fun uh it was it was kind of weird because uh when we first came up um uh, uh mike hallett uh well, i think his uh his uh, name in uh, memphis was tank uh okay. mantar um He came up with us and did the dark match, and then but when we went back to, to uh, do the shotgun, uh, I don't remember if he went. At some point, they uh, they left him off. They left him in Memphis, and uh, we never really, you know, got a. Re I, I didn't get a reason why. I don't know. Uh, you know, I thought we jailed pretty good down there. Made a good group. Okay. But uh, uh, Luke Poyer joined the group, and uh, okay. he he's actually from Montreal. Uh, okay. He joined the group, and he had wrestled for years over in Germany for Otto Wants as okay. uh, Rambo. Okay. So he joined the group, and uh, and that was the group that that made the actual TV. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, how did they uh, propose you to team up with uh, uh, the late uh, Ray Trailer, aka the Big Boss Man? He is also a WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah. How did they propose you to team up with him? 
Uh, we, well, we, you know, the truth commission thing came to an end and I, I was sitting at home for a few months. And, uh, once again, Jimmy Cornette called me up okay. and, uh, he had just moved from Stanford back down to, uh, to Louisville, his home and had went into business with Danny Davis and, uh, Danny had a promotion there called OVW. Uh, yeah, Danny Davis. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jimmy had an idea for a new gimmick. You know, he thought it might get me back up to the main roster. And so I said, sure, I'll, I'll you know, come down there. And uh, his idea was Bull Buchanan. But originally, Bull Buchanan in, in, in OVW was a uh, was a uh, a convict, a prisoner that was out on work release. Okay. Uh, so but somehow or another, you know, and, and I I. You know, Jimmy and I had talked about, you know, because Ray Trailer was a uh, was you know one of the guys I looked up to in the business. I'd never got to meet him, but you know, I just I he was from the around the same area that I'm from, and and I just looked up to him. You know, he he was a big guy and he could move. Uh, and I had pitched the idea, of, man, wouldn't it be great if they brought me in? You know, maybe kind of like chains as his, as his uh, nails as his trustee. Yeah. You know, um, but I they totally flipped the gimmick and I came in as a, as a, uh, uh, as, the, as his partner, as yeah. a, uh, yeah, as a prison guard. Now, Jimmy called me, I think on a Monday and said, uh, Hey, you gotta be at TV, uh, tomorrow. And, I, and we did TV. I usually drove up to OVW on Tuesdays for uh, Wednesday TV. And I said, yeah, I know I, I you know, I'm, I'm driving uh, tomorrow. And he said, no, you gotta be on their TV SmackDown. Uh, you gotta get a, a an outfit look like looks like boss man, so and this was like at two o'clock, so yeah, I ran around trying to find you know found the pants, found the shirt, but I couldn't find the tack vest, and I you know I got the TV and uh, met Ray and talked to him for you know a couple minutes, and you know I said man I couldn't find a, a vest like yours, and he said oh I got an extra one here you go, he gave it to me, and which I still have uh, still have to this day, uh, but but it was great. I mean he was a he was a great guy. You'll never hear anybody say a bad thing about Ray trailer. Uh, yeah. he was just a real good guy. Everybody loved him. Uh, he was easy to work with. Uh, everybody liked working with him. Um, you know, he was just easy. He, he was so smooth in the ring and, you know, he understood the business and he helped me, uh, not only in the ring, but, you know, also outside the ring. Cause I had been yeah. under contract since 1997. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but uh, our, our first run with the Truth Commission, you know, it was a good. I mean, it was a good run, but you know, we wasn't main eventing, you know, anything or like that. But once I got with Ray, you know, we were main eventing house shows, and and you know, we went right into uh, the thing with uh, Rocky and the Cage. So I was getting some, yeah, some a lot bigger checks than I was used to, and uh, you know, Ray really helped me on that end, uh, got me set up financially, and uh, you know, he was he was a great guy. Awesome. And what was your first reaction when you, you when you found uh, in 2000 that you were that you were involved in the WrestleMania uh, 2000 show? Oh, I, I was stoked. I, 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 I was I can't remember the numbers, but I had been in the, my first WrestleMania 16, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, was the year that, uh, you know, they debuted uh, L.O.D., Back with yep. the sunny, with the with the you know the yep. kind of new new look. Some of your fourteen, but you yeah. know, about for some of your fourteen. Yeah, it was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back uh, in Battle Royal, uh, yeah, Boston, Boston, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it was a like a twenty team Battle Royal, so you know, just kind of just a you know a, a face in the crowd. But this was you know we were actually on you know being featured on the show and. Uh, Yeah, first, you know, and and uh, I'd really preferred to be for if if I wasn't going to be, you know, way up on the card, I'd much rather been first match than you know second or third or something like that because we got to you know kind of go out and set the tone and the people were yeah. fresh. So, uh, and, and two, you, I was working uh, in the first match. I, yeah, you were. Uh, you I, I knew God. I, yeah, I knew Godfather. Um, I knew Godfather uh, uh, because, you know, I'd been there for a while before, but uh, I knew D'Lo a lot better because I knew D'Lo all the way from Smoky Mountain. So mm -hmm. it was okay, cool okay. getting to work with one of my friends. Okay. 
Nice. Uh, really nice. And uh, you're talking about uh, Godfather. Uh, so yeah, what? sure. Okay. Uh, in 2000, uh, the stable uh, Right to Censor was born. The stable was... Yeah. Uh, uh, in, uh, involving uh, Valvinus, Ivory, The Godfather, The Cat, Stephen Richards, and uh, you, of course. Yourself. Who yep. was behind uh, this, the stable, uh, the idea of the stable? You know, I'm, I'm not really sure who, who actually pitched the idea, uh, but, you know, the whole idea was uh, it was uh, yes. kind of getting a jab at the parent-teacher council. Um, nice. Stevie, Stevie Richards had been coming out for a few weeks uh, talking about it, you know, by himself. But I think we were in Albany, New York, and um, Stevie approached me, and Stevie and I had, had gotten to be friends. And he approached me and, and told me that, uh, you know, that I was going to be with him, and he, he laid, laid the whole idea out to me. And I thought, you know, this is, this is going to get some heat. Uh, this is going to, uh, you know, really get, uh, get us uh, featured – in the show so uh yeah that's how it started and then uh you know we picked up godfather which was huge huge because you know i i had been a i had been a bad guy or a heel ever since you know i'd been there so it was not it wasn't a stretch for me but you know godfather turning you know and, and coming with us man that really i think that really uh put us on the map with the fans is like, Oh dang, you know, these guys are, they're, they're actually doing something with them. And then of course we, you know, we got ivory and we got Val and, uh, man, we yeah. just, uh, it, it clicked. It, I mean, the people yeah. really hated it and, and that's what we were <laughs> really? going for. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> with, uh, Charles Wright, uh, you won the tag team champion. So congratulations. Yes. And, and, congratulations. Uh, yes. Yeah. What is your reaction when you learn uh, on the booking that you uh, you, uh, you won the belt, you win the belt uh, that night. Yeah, Michael. Well, Michael Hayes. Uh, uh, I've been fr uh, friends with Michael Hayes for a long time. I met him when I was first starting out on the Indies, and so he was he was one of the guys up there that you know I kind of went to, and you know if I had a question or if I had an idea, or and. Uh, he had told me, he had said something a few weeks before that. He said, you know, I think they're going to do something, uh, something nice to you guys. And, uh, sure enough, a couple of weeks later, you know, we got there and, uh, and found out that they were, uh, you know, going to put the belts on us. Um, uh, which is, I mean, like I say, it's, you know, dream come true. I mean, to say that you've been a champion in the, in the, you know, the, the very top of your profession is, uh, is, uh, you know, Something you hang your hat on, I think. It's hard work pays off, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah, in 2002 or 2003, I don't remember, you teamed with uh, John Cena uh, as uh, his bodyguard, B2. What do you yep. take away from this experience? Well, well I, I, had a, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I, I'd known <laughs> John for a, I'd known John for about a, a, a year or so. Uh, I knew he was going to be, I knew he was going to be a star. You know, I knew all those guys because uh, after the RTC finished, uh, I was off the road for a while. So I called them up and asked if I could go to OVW and, you know, just keep working down there. They said, sure. So uh, I went down there. So I got to, uh, I got to uh, work, work around and work with that class, you know, Orton, Cena, Batista, mm -hmm. Shelton, Brock, yeah. uh, all those all guys. The guys from OVW, yeah. OVW talent. Yeah. And yes, I got to work with all those guys. So uh, I knew him from down there, and I, I knew his his mic skills were just you know off the chain. So um, I had a lot of fun with it. I think I think we had a lot of fun. I think it was a good kickoff for him. Uh, you know, I was uh, I, I knew going in. You know, the the focus focus of this was going to be john and uh and, and that's what it should have been you know uh but i uh we actually uh didn't really know which way we were going with it and shelton benjamin and myself were riding together at the time and i just thought it would be uh i thought it would be funny and entertaining if the bodyguard you know kind of looked like a, a m and a white guy especially me being a redneck from from georgia 
um, <laughs> you know, dressing like Eminem and trying to be, you know. And uh, so me and Shelton went to the mall, whatever town we were in, and, and got the, you know, the whole get up and the chains and everything. And, and that's where we <laughs> came from. <laughs> and, uh, and in the spirit that was tendance, if you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. yeah and I that's think, really you know, me and me and John were uh, me and John were sitting around one day, and we were trying. And he he thought that he said, "You need a catchphrase. You know, we need a you need something to finish up the rap with." And I, I think it, I think he actually thought of it. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was him. Uh, there was a guy on ESPN at the time, and that was his. You know, the booyah. Uh, so that, and that's where that came from, and we tried it, and then you know, that's we just rolled awesome. with it. Fantastic, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So, uh, you were, uh, after uh, this experience, you wrestled in all Japan pro wrestling and pro wrestling Noah. Yep. Um, Japan wrestling promotions is very, very uh, stiff, we have uh good reputation for tough guys so yeah. my question is uh, really simple who are your toughest opponent in japan uh well i you know uh, uh i guess toughest in a sense of having the hardest matches uh because i always enjoyed uh working with them mm -hmm. but um I we I really enjoyed working with uh, Kawada and uh, okay. Kobashi. Wow, uh, Kobashi was you know, Kobashi was a big guy. You know, yeah. uh, I think it translates sometimes, but he was really a, a big guy. So you could have a a, a big guy match with it. And Kawada, I just I'd watched him for so long. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and Muda too. Muda too, but Muda's style was so different. Muda's style was very American. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he, I, I guess he'd been over here so long that, you know, he, he his style was very American. Uh, Kawada, I, uh, and, well, I, and I have to say, uh, um, Kobashi and uh, uh, Kensky. I, I love working with Kensky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those guys, you know, they hit you hard, but they didn't mind getting hit hard back. You know, there was never any, there was never any complaints. There was never any, you know, uh, anything like that. It was just good, hard matches. And when you got done, you, you knew that you'd been in a match. And, and yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's the way I like to, that's the way I like to feel, you know, like you, you, you've earned your money that night. But that, that's pretty cool uh, to work with that, that kind of style because uh, you can push your limit. So uh, yes. that, that's very cool. So, um, in your real in your, the real life, uh, you were or you are a police officer. Are you still involved in law enforcement? Yes, I am. Uh, I uh, in 2012, I uh, started working for the sheriff's department here in the town I live in, Carroll County. Okay. Uh, I had had some friends there, and uh, I Cup County. Kind of... Cup County. Cup County. Cup County. Okay. Why? You, oh you, yeah, you yeah. Carol like a big boss man, like Cobb County, yeah. Georgia, big boss man. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, close, 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 but close. no, okay. Carroll County. But, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I started. Uh, I started working there as a uh, as a uh, a guard at the jail, and uh, okay. did that for about a year, and then went to the police academy. Um, okay. I went out on the road as a as a deputy. Uh, did okay. that for a few years, and then I went to investigations. I was an investigator for a few years, and uh, about a year and a half ago, I went to the courthouse, and that's where I work now at the uh, at the courthouse. Nice, okay. nice. And uh, for ending, <laughs> as usual, uh, my partner uh, Benoit, uh, his nickname is uh, Nostradamus. It's all about uh, the French prophets, <laughs> yeah, Nostradamus. And uh, as usual, he tried to predict the future of our guests, so. Go ahead, my friend. Don't harass me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ser seriously. Uh, uh, in few years, uh, the right to censor will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And oh. uh, you will be in the gang, uh, of course, <laughs> as a member of uh, the stable. Oh, uh, You know, that would, that would be great. Uh, I, people tell me all the time, you know, that, Oh, you guys! I actually won. You actually, you know, cleaned up the 
WWE. And I, you know, in a way, I, in a storyline way, I guess we we kind of did, you know. But uh, but I actually talked to Stevie. Not uh, I, I I still talk to Stevie uh, once in a while, and uh, okay. I talked to him not too long ago, and he actually said that he had heard from people that he he knew that was still there that the idea had been kicked around a few times about bringing us back, like in a Royal Rumble or something like that, you know. But uh, yeah. oh yeah, I think it'd be great, you know. So thank you so much, honestly, for your time. It's oh no very, problem. Very appreciate Thirty minutes. This is super awesome. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, thank you this, guys. we are very Welcome. grateful about that. So uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.